I think that's one of the biggest challenges that people face is that what resources, what what is there out there to do? And I think, you know, we get this question all the time at, at, at events is, you know, where do I go now? Mm. What, where, where can I go to do this? Where can I do to go to do that? And I think your foundation is uh, always, I point and go check it out. <laughs> and I, I just learned about your tenants. Uh, yeah. I, I love it. It's uh, courage, courage, confidence, confidence, and competence. competence. Yeah. And you explained a little bit, uh, uh, but it, it, and the order is important, right? Yeah. Because you, you build that courage first and, you know, I'll let you walk through it and yeah. what, what, that, what that is. So, like, you know, again, those are definitely, like, our pillars. And mm -hmm. I, I believe, like, I had to gain courage in my journey. So this is why it's so important to have organizations that are somewhat, you know, when they are serving people of some demographic to have the leader have some type of experience or knowledge in the field. Mm -hmm. Because for me, like, even the name disabled but not really, when I was in that hospital bed and I came up with disabled but not mm -hmm. really, I was thinking of myself as being disabled based on everyone else's perspective. Mm -hmm. But for me, I had surpassed everyone's perception of what this disability was mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. Like now, they, like you said, everybody was surprised and it shows like uh -huh. what lens people look at. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, oh, well, I had been disabled, yeah, to what they knew. Mm -hmm. But now who I am, who I've created, and what I'm about to do is something that no one understands. I get to teach them. You know, and so one of my favorite quotes is like, experience is the teacher that owes no favors. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at like my organization, it is based on that. So what gave me courage? The ability to go, you know, to start eating right. Like, so we focus on nutrition, um, health, wellness, and then mental health. And so all these things like really pushed me. So it was like nutrition was first. That's what changed me. That's what allowed my mind to be clear, to challenge myself to do more. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was fitness. So we go, we want you to have the courage to get into a space that now you can push yourself to gain confidence. And the only way you will gain confidence is by challenging yourself through adversity. Mm -hmm. Because once you surpass that, then you, you be, I always tell people, like, once you push past your mental limits, you become unstoppable. And so having that courage to push past those limits, you become unstoppable in a, in a point of you gain confidence. So you're confident in the things that you do. And then once they're done, with, once they get that confidence, now it's competence because now every day you wake up mm -hmm. with that drive. Every day you're, you're creating something new for your life. Mm -hmm. And again, like that was how my, so after the hospital, I got right into becoming an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and I competed in wheelchair bodybuilding and CrossFit for three years. And even those were challenges mm -hmm. because I never worked out. So yeah. then you start seeing me on like magazines, climbing a rope in my mm -hmm. wheelchair. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think my heaviest overhead press is like 225. Like when I remember when I did it the mm -hmm. first time, someone was like, ah, you know, like the able-bodied guy, like, oh man, I don't know if I can get past 170. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I felt good. Like, okay, no judgment yeah, there, right? But it, again, like, so having to know that nutrition allowed me to have the strength and ability to, to lift the weights mm -hmm. and do the things that I wanted to do, you know, gain the confidence in it, again, the competence. And it's all about creating your identity. You know, if anything that we can do is to help you create your own identity and a healthier mind creates a healthier body, creates a better life. And so it's like, how do you have a clear mind where you put the right things in your body to clear your mind? You know, if you got the wrong things in your body, create toxins and all these other negative energy. Mm -hmm. Then when you go, work out now that's doing something completely different and anyone can work out because your ability doesn't matter it's what you can do with the abilities that you have there's even people that have been scientifically proven that you know they can you know bench press with their mind mm -hmm. to the point when you actually put a bar to them they're lifting that same weight because mentally they were doing the repetitions so that's some of the things that i've learned where I'm like, well, let's let's try these things mentally. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do a curl mentally before we add weight to you, because though now you 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 have the courage to try something, now you're gonna have confidence in yourself to mm -hmm. actually pick up that weight, and maybe at five pounds the first one, and then next thing you know you got the 
the mm -hmm. 10 and then the 15 and then it keeps going on. And, and we always go back and say, okay, well, what part of our pillars that you, you feel like you've gained? Is it the courage, the confidence, or the competence? Mm -hmm. And you'll see everyone go with the steps. Like, mm -hmm. all of this helped me with courage. This allowed me confidence, and I'm still working to be competent. Mm -hmm. Like, see, it's not about, mm -hmm. like, allowing you to just say, hey, you're gonna be successfully yep. done. Mm -hmm. It's just, if you understand these three, mm -hmm. then you, once you gain the first two, you, every day you're working to create that competence, you know, so. Mm -hmm. When you create something that's yours, right? It, mm -hmm. It's yours, it's your baby and you're, you're all in and, and you look at it and you're like, man, this is mine, I've, I've done it great. But at one point, you, you let go, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you let go and you say, you know what, I did my job, I took it this far. Do you see yourself saying, I took DBNR this far and now it's it's its own, it's its own thing? <laughs> do you see yourself letting it go and getting oh. to that point where you're like you know what I, I did my job and now it's grown enough is that where you want to take it, it where it's it's a foundation that's running itself that is beyond West Hamilton yeah. um yes mm -hmm. yes and no right like mm -hmm. because it's my baby mm -hmm. and it was me that did the thing like it wasn't like I went to school to start this or learn like this knowledge came straight from experience it came from a lot of doubt it came from me understanding that no one else could push me and so even like giving the my baby to someone else mm -hmm. there's a lot of steps of me being willing and okay mm -hmm. you know like you got to have an empathetic heart you have to you have to love everyone genuinely no matter you know, whatever their perceptions on life, you have to understand accountability comes from you first. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, every choice, even choice itself is a choice. Like, see those things, mm -hmm. like, in order for me to give it, you yep. gotta have this yep. mentality yep. Uh -huh. that doesn't just look at it as an organization, but look at it as you are serving others to create their own identity in a world that has already perceived them as something else. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it, that's how I see it, yep. right? Like, and if we don't lead people to create their identity and we're just serving them, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, we're not doing it for numbers, we're not doing it for funding, we're, not, we're doing it to empower someone to take control of their life. And so for me, my goal with starting DBNR was that no one could tie money to me teaching someone something that served me. Mm -hmm. Right? Like that was my main purpose. Like, mm -hmm. of course, we've grown and mm -hmm. done amazing successfully in different things, but that passion of saying, like, I can be in a room and just talk to someone newly injured and give them that spark that maybe the program is doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so it, it will still be there. But with my life and career, I see myself scaling more than just focused on in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's like, okay, we leave a certain area, mm -hmm. right? Like now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking the back end. Mm -hmm. Let me pop up. We do a um, Friday mental health and gratitude check-in on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I try to make sure I'm present on those calls because that's where I find the most, I can give you the most value. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, I've been a trainer because I've been an athlete. I did all these things, but we actually have OTs and PTs that went and got certs that want to train, right? And so their background is already built on that. So we allow them training. But where can Wes really help you? Well, let me get you out of that being disabled mentally, mm -hmm. right, before you become physically, and then allow you to push past those limitations by conversation, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's where I found more of the value. Um, and the, you know, the long-term goal is to scale of what we do. The long-term goal is to have facilities all over the country, all over the world. Like, I do feel like we do have, um, we do have something special, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and it's maybe just the, where we started is probably what I leave. Yep. Because I've seen so much more when it comes to identity. Mm -hmm. We were fitness and nutrition thing led, but now it's like, you know, like we talked earlier, mm -hmm. like people are artists uh -huh. in the disabled community. There's ways that you can help mental health c coming from art. Mm -hmm. There's ways that you can help with mental health, even from storytelling. So it's like, how can I now take some of the things that I do daily mm -hmm. and now impact those, you know, and elevate it. Even mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. I'm big on entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and I'm very big on it being in a disabled community because as we know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people to deal with this fixed incomes, mm -hmm. a lot of the SSIs and money isn't a lot, 
people are on insurance that really hold them, you know, where they can't get the, the necessities that they need to live every day. And it's like, but industries and, and things are opening up. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Like, so I guess I see myself rolling back a little bit mm -hmm. from disabled, but not really, yeah. but only to make a bigger impact, you know, globally. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I see it. No, is that one of the reasons why you're out here in LA is to expand to to the West Coast? If it is, is it, why LA? Why, why Los Angeles? <clears throat> um, I'm, I, you know, I'm constantly motivated in LA, for one. Um, Kansas City, Missouri is a small city, big but small, and there's only so far you can go when you're in a, in a place that a lot of people that you um, relate to are mm -hmm. products of their environment. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and there's definitely environments people are products of in LA. <laughs> Absolutely. But at the same time, there's so much opportunity, there's so much growth, there's innovation happening. You see it, you see the world still moving in LA. And when you go to smaller cities like Kansas City, it can sit still. Mm -hmm. Everyone is doing the same thing, it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's a comfortable place. LA, you can't be comfortable. Yep. Like you get comfortable, it's not gonna work uh -huh. for you. You know, so like I think that's it. Like I wanna continue being uncomfortable because you know, having a spinal cord injury isn't something that's just like Oh, you got this special group of people and that's it. Mm -hmm. No, people acquire this injury every day, yeah. right? It happens in so many ways, not just violence. It can be a work accident. Mm -hmm. It can be a car accident. It can be all these different things. It can be a health accident, right? Like, and so for me, it's, it's how can I come to a place that is already doing things that already sees mm -hmm. people with disabilities? See, I'm big on the visual. Mm -hmm. Like my city, I'm still working on being seen. Mm -hmm. You know, and here, like, I see people without intention. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just driving. I'm like, oh, there's a guy in a wheelchair. And I know when someone's, like, mm -hmm. in maybe my position, yeah. right? Because they uh -huh. got the custom spinach uh -huh. wheels and stuff. <laughs> you know, they looking real fresh. Uh -huh. But that's that's what I see out here. Yeah. And, I, you know, I refuse to, like, be somewhere when I'm not seen, but I'm I'm working so hard to be seen, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not like I want to be seen by them, but the acknowledgement to see a disabled body doing amazing things exactly. yep. is, is something good. Mm -hmm. And so just coming somewhere where you got TV and media and advertising and all these different companies out here that mm -hmm. allow and have the platforms where people can be seen with disabled bodies. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just be out here and work with them. And, and again, Absolutely. let me open that door mm -hmm. and leave it open for the next person. There's a lifestyle behind the product. Yeah. And when we started the program for, you know, we, for lack of a better word, the influencer program, you know, you were, a, Danny reached out and said, this is, we have to work with Wes. Because <laughs> Wes has that style going. And then when you went and des designed your wheels, I was like, you know, that's gonna look, <laughs> that's gonna look pretty fresh. But, you know, I think that's that's one of the things where, where we want to show people. It's easy for a business. I think you know, we, we talk about, you make one product and it's a good product and you can just make it and it sells well. But, it, I think to the community we owe more to that. Yeah. Because there is specific wheels that are made for this lifestyle. There's wheels that are made for this other lifestyle. And having the right equipment makes a world of a difference, right? You told us about your tires, having the big <laughs> tires and not knowing better. Um, so as, as businesses, what, what's one thing we can do to make new users or existing users find what's good for, what's right for them? Not what's good, but what's right for them and what makes their lifestyle better? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, as just anyone, mm -hmm. um, because let's, let's put it from this, 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 uh, this lens. If like as a, as a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and have, and I, you know, I have a disability. I don't sometimes understand mm -hmm. how the able-bodied community want to be served by a person with a disabled body, mm -hmm. right? Same way, so everybody community really mm -hmm. don't understand like how to serve the set. Mm -hmm. So my approach is always the human aspect, mm -hmm. right? Like 
before you before people want to be seen with the, the cool tools and mm -hmm. things like that they want to be acknowledged mm -hmm. and so like I think the first step is just acknowledging who you are serving mm -hmm. and understand that these are people mm -hmm. and that once you serve people you create a better solution than serving the problem that people are having mm -hmm. Right, like you're serving the individual. So that's like you said, like, so for me, like I find joy in my custom wheels because it speaks to me, right? Like it, 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 it the problem was like, yeah, man, you know, certain spokes might cause issues. They break easy, da, da, da. But seeing me and saying, hey, we got nice, you know, technology that comes from these durable spokes, but how you want them? Right, like, mm -hmm. like yeah, that, exactly. that, uh -huh. see, so like, I feel like, one, you guys are doing a great job in the approach that you're taking, and then allowing that opportunity, but then say for anyone that's working with the disabled community, this community is, you know, and the things that we need are very cost effective, mm -hmm. so as business owners and people that are serving, like, coming up with opportunities and ways that, you know, things can be more, they don't have to, you don't have to really will and deal, mm -hmm. but, you know, coming with arrangements and payment plans and things like that so that those individuals can be seen, um, you know, are, are a great way to let them know like, hey, we are willing to work with you mm -hmm. because a lot of things that I've experienced is that most people don't want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And it's all about business and not about the human aspect. So again, like when you're just serving this community and anyone that I think that the, the biggest value and benefit is, yes, you want to make money and all of these things, but you make more money when you see the person. Because when you see the person and they become your your organic advocate, mm -hmm. right? They're your natural person that is using their, their voice to speak your mission and things because of how you treated them. Mm -hmm. So my advice is treat people how you want to be treated and if you want to grow in anything mm -hmm. you see people for the way that you want to be seen mm -hmm. because Sorry. everything else comes in conversation mm -hmm. so a lot of people are like oh man we don't know how to and it's like because you never had a conversation mm -hmm. right like most of us will tell you how things work for us mm -hmm. once the conversation is initiated yep. but if you just kind of put somebody over in a corner and, and give them a piece of paper and pen mm -hmm. they're going to treat you the same way they've been treated in the other systems that do the same thing. And I'm not being seen. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's why you're not going to grow. Mm -hmm. So the main so, advice is see people and everything else, you know, comes after. So. Well, I think one of the things that shook is your, the way you view life is I watched and this, that episode of the, the Kura, Kura, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to bring it up. <laughs> And I think that just the fact alone that you 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 met your shooter face to face <laughs> that you know like I said I grew up I, I grew up in in East LA back in the nineties where I lived through it right yeah and you never hear that you never hear <laughs> it happen where some you know somebody shot you and you and you meet them and yeah. not only are you shaking hands and laughing and. You didn't want an apology, yeah. Because my interpretation, and I'll let you know, let you're gonna tell what how it is. But my interpretation is you're you're so content and happy, and your life has become what you wanted it to be. That you're not living in the past. You're not gonna let that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Like this whole journey, and like mm -hmm. as I share, um, you know. The most profound thing for me in life was that I lost weight. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, people are like, what is it? I'm like, you just don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. I say I'm negative. I was a negative person. Uh -huh. But once I, you know, lost this weight, I became so positive uh -huh. yeah. and happy. And it was like, dang, was I really bad on self-esteem? Uh -huh. Did nobody ever tell me that, like, I was facing these things, so I created a negative mentality, mm -hmm. that, which led to a negative life. Yeah. But then when I battled that, everything, like, so again, my pure joy came from someone changing my life but allowing me to change my life for the better like mm -hmm. it was so many things i could be grateful for instead of just you put someone putting me in this position mm -hmm. so I, I always say like before the show and before all of that like i was probably um let's say i was probably i was probably like year seven of my injury um when all of that 
uh, happen. And two years prior, I would always, I would start an affirmation. So I'm big on affirmations and gratitude. And you know, I wake up every day. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for these things. Well, you can't practice gratitude and be fake about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so if you're saying you're grateful for life. Why would you sit there and think about the past that mm -hmm. that you hated about life, yeah. right? So like mm -hmm. every day, I was yeah. like, man, I'm, I'm grateful for life. Mm -hmm. But the other part was that I would say that the man that tried to take my life mm -hmm. gave me life mm -hmm. because I was living, like I was doing things I had never traveled to. I yeah. became in a, you know, got in mm -hmm. a wheelchair. Like I was such a product of my environment that even leaving the environment wasn't something that I believed in, mm -hmm. you know. So I stayed there, and so again. It was so much good, but I had manifested mm -hmm. what I saw in my future. I didn't know that we were going to meet, but I was so willing to do it. Yeah. You know, and so again, like I'm big on adversity. I'm big on like manifesting. I'm big on speaking things into existence. Mm -hmm. And even the fact that you're going to be tested. Most people, I always look, you know, people that I work with, I tell them like, hey, mm -hmm. your, your disability could have been a test. Mm -hmm. Like your plan in life could be so much more, but we got to, you know, you got to see how strong you are. Mm -hmm. Like most people say, oh, I can't, I, I could never do that. And that's why you're not in this mm -hmm. position. Yeah. You know, like that's, I don't look at it as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I look at it like all the things that I'm doing and all the good that I'm doing couldn't have been done if I wasn't in this position, right? Mm -hmm. And why am I so full of life being in this position? Because life has only elevated with me being in this position. Mm -hmm. And so meeting a man that shot me, I was already focused on telling him thank you and of course like most people yeah why was like the first question mm -hmm. I did want to know why like I did uh -huh. and you know once he told me why being a product of my environment I think my response was that if the shoe was on the other foot I would have did the same thing mm -hmm. and most people don't want to take that full accountability yeah. most people play victim but every time I heard my story come out of somebody else's mouth it was that I walked back to my car and I was shot and I was shot by somebody I didn't know, mm -hmm. right? That is so true mm -hmm. because the situation had de-escalated and I started walking back to my car when I was shot and the person that I saw, I did not know, mm -hmm. but he was called by someone else that I did have an issue with mm -hmm. and that we didn't have time to relay the information to him mm -hmm. as much as he was coming and from his words, he was trying to preserve a life and it wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. So again, when you come from a certain lifestyle, and things change no matter how bad the situation is you have to take full accountability mm -hmm. and my actions and emotions played a major part of me being in this position today mm -hmm. you know and most people will play victim because the world wants you to be a victim right and if i was a victim then i wouldn't even be me because living with a victim mentality would have left me defeated but i'm not a victim to a situation more than i'm a survivor to my circumstance mm -hmm. right and so that's why I had expressed that gratitude to him. And, and again, like you said, it wasn't shown. I'm, you know, I grew up, grew up in neighborhoods that, you know, even after it happened, I had a lot of people from my community looking down on me. You know, I mean, I gave, you know, I gave the producers his information. Everybody knows as I said all the time, but I remember when they asked, like, hey, would you be willing to meet the man that shot mm -hmm. you? Like, of course it was a surprise yeah. on the show. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what day, none yep. of that. But my response was, well, here's his information. Yeah. And they was like, whoa. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if you come from my neighborhood, mm -hmm. well, once I woke up, we were already focused on retaliation. Yeah. Right? Because that is what That's you know, what right? Happens, yeah. That's what, mm -hmm. but you can't retaliate when you're trying to create a new life. Yeah. It's hard to have all that hate in your heart when you're trying to create somebody new, mm -hmm. right? You, and I think I shared something. I said, I didn't even love myself until I got in this position. And, and that process of becoming better is what created the self-love. And when I created the self-love, it removed hate for anyone. Mm -hmm. Cause then I really understood that everybody had their own journey. So that's where it is. Like that mm -hmm. was the reason why I, I created that empathy mm -hmm. at that, that, that moment. Yeah. Like I understood that five to seven years ago, we both had a different mentality, mm -hmm. but now, we can grow from that mentality yeah. and we can show now the world that this can be done mm -hmm. and it only happens when you take accountability yeah. absolutely but you tell me what's what's happening <laughs> next year for dbnr that we can look forward to uh, yeah. or just in your personal life or anything that we <laughs> we can see what's doing so much so much is happening mm -hmm. like no it's definitely um 
I mean, tomorrow great stuff is gonna happen. Every day is amazing as long as you make it. And so like for me, like I am a visionary of the future. Um, and we had we, a lot of our programming had always been working with other individuals and partnering, primarily with gyms and things back in our area. Um, I'm proud to say that we just got our own location this spring, um, this past spring. And so our goal is to really put more programs with under our roof, mm -hmm. um, do more events that are structured around educating individuals beyond like what we do, mm -hmm. right? So providing the resources, but also just kind of tapping in with the community, um, you know, and, and uh, I think just just more events. Like my biggest thing right now is the events. Like I, I, I believe that, and I'm not just thinking like community events, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of events that really create knowledge and understanding um, because Disabled But Not Really is a brand name and, and it's powerful and it does represent those that have took ownership over their disability and, um, and, and want it to be so much more. Mm -hmm. And so I think in the future, we're just gonna amplify that we can be more than disability itself and then work with individuals and companies like you guys that can now create that level of independence and freedom by you know mm -hmm. certain amazing tools and right right because right, uh -huh. right. i think that's that's the pivot like we help with certain areas and then and then we work with other people to now extend that a level of freedom i think we're all on the same mission of creating independence and freedom for people and, and my position and beyond so all right <laughs> well it's great talking to you and i uh, really look forward to, to working with you continuing to work with you going forward Absolutely. Um, if anybody want to know, it's disabledbutnotreally.org and check it out. Um, all social media, mm -hmm. um, disabled but not really. It is not spelled different, so you can check it out. Google us, Google me if you want to know more about me. I, this is my plug. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll take your time. All the you need, yeah. <laughs> like, like final words, final like words, yeah. PSA. No. Um, <laughs> um, no, but. I want people to know that when they even watch this interview and you see my joy, it's not something that I'm thinking, Absolutely. you know, and it's not, it's not something that, it's not a mask. It is literally the process that I fell in love with of knowing who I am and accepting that I'm different, you know, and accepting that everything about me is not going to be similar to the next person. Um, and I think that's, that's the joy I have. Like, I, I'm okay with being different. And if anyone can take something from me today, it's being okay with your own uniqueness. Rather you have a disabled body, rather your mindset might not be where you want. Like you, you accept the things and then you can change them. And so for me, all I did was accept and then I, I, I created the reality I wanted to see. And so if you're battling anything today, I will just tell you start accepting it first and then you can change it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs>